If you don't have time for anything but work and the most urgent errands, if you constantly feel super low energy, if at some point you feel like such lifestyle is too hard for you, then most probably you are down the exhaustion funnel. In this video I'll talk about what it is and how not to end up there. When you have too many important things to do, such as work, some life-changing processes, health management, studying, etc., quite naturally you begin to have less time for everything else. And you think that it's completely fine to eliminate everything less important for the sake of the more important. Hobbies, meetings with friends, book clubs, hiking, or even going to the farmer's market. You try to optimize everything so that those things wouldn't rob you of your time. But it often happens so that after eliminating all the unnecessary activities, you never bring them back and you get immersed only in the big things without all those little experiences that ground, inspire and charge you. Although you try to free more time, you begin to notice that less and less time is left and that you have less and less energy. And here are some warning signs that your life optimization has taken a wrong turn. You get easily irritable. Your creativity is at zero. Your circle of contacts has drastically narrowed. You avoid exercising. You get tired very fast. You hate all regular routines. Your eating habits got much worse. You either constantly undersleep or oversleep. If a few of these signs are very familiar to you at the moment, then there are high chances that you are heading down the exhaustion funnel. The name of this funnel speaks for itself and its concept was developed by Professor Marie Osberg, expert on burnout at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. The exhaustion funnel looks like this. The upper part of the funnel is a regular balanced life with work, hobbies, friends and entertainment, while the bottom of it is total burnout, when life narrows down to just work and sleep. And of course, work here can be replaced with any intense and very important activity, such as parenting or caretaking or studying or else. And as you see, the more our life gets narrowed down, the deeper we fall into that exhaustion funnel. The current social culture is hyper-focused on productivity. There are tons of books, courses, videos about how to be productive, get things done and become successful in the end. One of the most famous books on productivity is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And there, the habit number three sounds like put first things first. And here is a quote for you from this book. You have to decide what your highest priorities are and have the courage, pleasantly, smilingly, non-apologetically, to say no to other things. And the way you do that is by having a bigger yes burning inside. The enemy of the best is often the good. At the first sight, everything seems pretty logical. You need to eliminate all the secondary tasks in order to free more time for the primary ones. Many people who choose to follow the advice of such productivity gurus deprive themselves of small yet very crucial activities and experiences, thinking that, yes, that's what real adult life should look like. But then there, are, there is a very high risk of ending up in, at the bottom of the exhaustion funnels in complete desolation. Getting out of the exhaustion funnels is a challenging process that can require different strategies unique to each one. And the easiest and the smartest thing to do right now is to be preventative and to avoid fall falling into that funnel by keeping your life broad enough. 
Different activities have a different impact on us. Some can be very depleting, such as going to work that you hate, or dealing with toxic people, or doom scrolling, etc. But some activities can take time and even physical energy, but they give so much more back. They bring joy, the feeling of fulfillment and meaningfulness. It's all types of hobbies, spending time with your family and friends, it's sport, etc. And it's so important to keep these types of activities, the depleting and the filling ones, balanced. To figure out what depletes you and what fills you up, make a list of all your everyday tasks and activities and then ask yourself these questions. Which of these activities calm you down, lift your spirit, help you focus, help you feel alive? And which of these waste your inner resources, cause discomfort and irritation, deprive you of living in the moment? And then mark each line with a plus or a minus. A plus is for those things that fill you up and a minus is for those that deplete you. Listen to yourself and choose honestly. For some people, cleaning one's home is a dreadful drudgery, but for some people it's just joyful. Remember that it's not always possible to have the even number of pluses and minuses, and at the beginning it's just good enough to have at least two or three pluses on your daily agenda. And here is the most recent example from my personal life about how it works. Last Sunday I felt very depleted. I prepared the video to be published here on YouTube channel and I dealt with all the urgent stuff and errands and communications and I didn't feel like I had energy for anything else. The day didn't feel like a weekend at all and uh, everything that I wanted to do was to do nothing. But also it was the last day uh, to submit an artwork for a collage open call. I'm a passionate collagist and I was very excited to submit to that open call. The submission was absolutely for free and I already had an idea, but I kept postponing creating, actually creating the collage because I think it was not as important as my work and everything else that I have to do in my regular life. But to cut the long story short, I just reminded myself how making art is invigorating for me. And I ended up spending hours, but I made the collage and I submitted it and I felt an enormous influx of energy that kept me going through the tough beginning of the next week. In some of my videos that I published at the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024, I mentioned several times uh, the big creative block that I had. I wanted to change my collage style a lot. I wanted to make it more analog and quirky, not something that artificial intelligence would make. I'm self-taught and I'm always excited to get fresh guidance. And the class by Andy J. Pizza, a fantastic artist and human, helped me figure out what to do with myself as an artist. This class is available on demand on Skillshare and it's called Find Your Style – 5 Exercises to Unlock Your Creative Identity. Although it's based on illustration, the approach can be used for anything creative finding your cooking style, gardening style, writing, etc. Also, it's a super fun and optimistic class, one of the best that I've done on Skillshare, which, by the way, is the largest online learning community for creatives, with thousands of classes led by industry pros across film, illustration, design, freelance, all kinds of hobbies and more. If you have been dreaming of learning a new skill or taking up a new hobby but didn't know where to begin, Skillshare can become your great companion. All classes are available right away, without ads and distractions, but with a fantastic community where you can share your progress. You can join Skillshare right now 
The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this part of the video. By keeping your life broad, filled with different types of activities, balanced, you are doing yourself the most precious favor, which results will be seen very, very soon. Avoiding the exhaustion funnel is not about making little things a priority. No, it's all about welcoming them into your life every time you really need them. So live as if you were living already for the second time, and as if you had acted the first time as wrongly as you are about to act now. Feel free to share your thoughts and experiences down in the comment section, dear friends, but please be respectful and kind. Thank you so much for your time and attention, and huge thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon and other tipping platforms, because thanks to you this channel exists. And for now, as always, be safe and keep your heart open, and I will see you soon. Пока-пока!